this program, I'm going to take you to Hitler's hideaway in the Bavarian Alps. We'll be riding on the subway in Munich. I'll be giving you tips on what beer stein to buy and letting you in on the secret of good Bavarian beer. All coming up in A Practical Guide to Bavaria. Germany is one of the largest countries in Europe. And Bavaria is Germany's biggest state. I think the most interesting places to visit lie south of Bavaria's capital, Munich. Very large, but very green, Munich is unlike other major German cities. Its mix of beer gardens, museums, and theaters give it an almost Parisian atmosphere. To fly to Munich from the U.S., you'll probably have to change planes in Frankfurt. Then from the airport here, you grab the S-Bahn train, which brings you right here to the center of town, the main train station in Munich, the Hauptbahnhof. This is the tourist information office here at the train station. Now, look, maybe I caught everybody in there on a bad day, but they were very unfriendly and unhelpful, although they did speak English. But do like I did. Have your phrase book with you and just bug them until they tell you what you want to know. Don't let them put you off Munich. I decided to see Munich in style and stayed at the Bayerischer Hof one of the city's best and oldest hotels. It dates back to 1841. It's elegant, but not pompous, and it's in a perfect location for sightseeing Munich. Hello. Uh, guten Tag. Uh, uh, ich habe ein Reservieren. Uh, Gracio. Gracio, on yeah. the name? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sprechen Sie English? Yes, I do. Oh, I do. good. Okay. So, Mr. Gracio, I need to fill up the form, if you, uh, and you're... Uh, name, street, home address, and signature. Please. Gotcha. Do you need my passport? Oh, no, but maybe the credit card that I can make credit a print. Card? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, in German hotels, you don't have to show your passport, fill out a registration form, and they'll often ask for a credit card, but we're used to that back home. There are a staggering 428 rooms to choose from of all shapes, styles, and sizes. At the Bayerische Hof, rooms start at 450 Deutschmarks. That's about $300. Munich is a town that merits a few days' visit. The Bayerische Hof is one of the best hotels in town. It would be a great place to spend your time here. Listen, you can practice your breaststroke while looking at the famous Marienkirche. Those onion domes are the symbol of the city. You'll see them on t-shirts and, of course, beer mugs. They stand in the heart of the old town, on Marienplatz, where you'll find one of the oldest shows in town, the Glockenspiel. You can see the Glockenspiel here on Marienplatz every day at 11 a.m. And from May to October, it's also at noon and 5 p.m. If you're just not into walking, take the subway, or U-Bahn, as it's called over here, now, first stop for me sightseeing today is the Residence Museum. I need a ticket for the subway. So, they have something here called the Tagus card. It's like a one-day travel card, covers all your travel in the city. And if you get the single Tagus card for the blue zone, the inner zone, that'll get you pretty much everywhere you want to go sightseeing-wise. So, they want eight Deutschmarks. Now, you'll notice the machine doesn't speak English, but... It's pretty clearly marked. Now, here's a tip. If you pick this up at the airport when you hit town, you can really save money because it covers your journey in from the airport and then you can use it to travel around that day. And they have a Tagus cart, the partner Tagus cart, for two people. That's a real money saver. Okay, got my ticket? Where am I going? I better look at a map and find out where this residence is. My guidebook told me that the residence is at Odeonplatz, and there it is, and I'm at Hauptbahnhof, okay? I need U-Bahn line 4 or 5, that's the green or the gold one, okay? Green or gold, U4, U5, up there, goes here, goes there, goes that away, this way. Very important. You must punch your ticket before you ride the S-Bahn or the U-Bahn. There's a fine if they catch you and you haven't done it. With your Tagus card, by the way, you just punch it the first time you use it. Smooth. Quiet.
it. Nice. The residence was the home of the ruling Wittelsbach family, a wild and wacky home for a wild and wacky family who left a trail of castles all over Bavaria. Though the residence is not as mind-blowing as other Bavarian castles, it's an excellent appetizer for the rest. This is the Wittelbox family portrait gallery, and it's one of the few original rooms in the building. Most of the place was destroyed in wartime bombing. Now, when you visit here, be sure to take a look at the Schatzkammer Museum, which is included here, and that has the Bavarian family jewels. The residence is open Tuesday to Sunday, and entrance costs five Deutschmarks. That's about four dollars. My favorite of all Munich museums, though, is the Lenbach, and I recommend a visit. It houses a collection by the Blue Rider Group, which included Kandinsky and Clay, among others. Munich, like Paris, was a mecca for artists. The Lenbach is open every day except Mondays. Onion Dome t-shirts aren't my style, so I thought I'd buy a beer mug instead, and I'd heard that Max Krug on Neuhauserstrasse is the place to go. Only problem is, which one do I get? Hello, do you need some help, please? Please. There's so many here. The so curse many? of choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I mean, some of these are so fancy, I'd almost be afraid to drink out of them. No, they're mostly for show. Ah. A real beer stein to drink out of something like that, that's right. the classic stein. It keeps the beer fresh, and this is the most important thing. Not the design is it, that's the material is it. So it looks kind of plain, kind of sturdy. Yes, it's yeah. pottery, it's hand formed on a turning plate. Right. It's hand graved, glazed, fired, got a hand molded pewter top on it. We gave my father something like this one, and he kept hitting himself in the eye when he tried to yes. drink. Yes. How do you prevent that? How do you learn that? Uh, you got to learn it, you know, uh, to hold a beer stein is. You know, this is the wrong way to hold a beer stein because it's always complicated. Yes. You put your middle finger in here, and then you got your one... Sorry, Dad, we should have taught you, know, you that. And I was terrible. See, and then you put it on, on, on the desk. And you, you support and your it. elbow. That's it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> beer steins here at Max Krug start from 24 Deutschmarks. That's about $16. Berchtesgaden lies on the southernmost tip of Germany. From Munich, the rail journey takes about three hours. Buying a train ticket in any country where you don't speak the language can be tricky, so be sure to allow extra time at the station. Train tickets and information are found here, and this is just opposite track 20 and 21 here in the station. Now, last time I was in town doing work for the program, I had a tough time in there. There wasn't much English spoken, not a lot of information available. I want to go to Bechtus Garden today. Let's see how I do. Okay, got one. See, Berchtesgaden Garden is a popular spot. Last time I was here, they were all out of these babies. Timetables. Okay, so far so good. Let's go get a ticket. Okay, got my ticket this time, no problem. Now, very important, check the makeup board of the train. You have to be sure you get on the right train and the right car of the train, because sometimes the trains split at stations and they go in opposite directions. You want to get where you're going, after all. Ask questions when you buy your ticket. Check the makeup board on the platform. This picturesque little town is embedded in a valley surrounded by seven mountains. Adolf Hitler used it as a secret alpine hideaway. It's in a perfect location and has pretty squares and streets and more than its share of tourist traps. One of the main attractions of Berchtesgaden is Königssee, Germany's cleanest and deepest lake. I recommend a boat trip across Königssee for the scenery alone. You sail through what look like Norwegian-style fjords, and you can visit the hamlet of St. Bartholomew and its Baroque churches. For a bird's-eye view of where you've been, go up the Jenner Mountain. Now, I think I've been on every cable car in Europe, and this is one of the best. Thank you.
What's more, you can get a Sonder ticket, which combines the boat trip and cable car for 31 Deutschmarks, or about $21. I stayed just outside Berchtesgarten at Hotel Kapelek. Give the scenery painter a raise. At the Hotel Kapelek, rooms cost from 65 Deutschmarks per person. That's about $44. Stay with me, and I'll take you to Hitler's hideaway in the Bavarian Alps, and take you to the original Disney castle. All coming up in A Practical Guide to Bavaria. Let's face it, Berchtesgarten means one thing, Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun's love nest. I took a bus tour with David Harper, who's been working here in Berchtesgarten for years and really knows his stuff. He even gave me umbrella holding lessons. Some view, huh? Well, that's mountain weather for you. It was beautiful here yesterday. Today, pea soup. You know, they have an expression here in Bavaria. There's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. So be sure and pack your weather gear. By the way, if you don't have all the time or the interest in taking a full tour of the Eagle's Nest, you can just grab a bus up here from the city train station. It's a city bus, and it only sets you back about 25 Deutschmarks. Speaking of pea soup, I'm cold. This is July. David throws some juicy Nazi gossip in with the serious stuff. I wish high school history had been like this. With the dog Blondie, and they had their deck chairs out here, and maybe you know. Anyone caught whistling "Springtime for Hitler" will be made to walk down. A guided tour of the Eagle's Nest and bunkers costs 47 Deutschmarks. That's about $32. The Bavarian Alps run west from Berchtesgarten along Germany's southern border. But there's even more to this area of Germany than exquisite scenery. This is the home of the fairy tale castles of Mad King Ludwig II, including the original Disney castle, Neuschwanstein, which towers above the town of Fusen. You can pick up a direct bus to Neuschwanstein from Fusen railway station. The ticket lines at the top can be horrendous, but I hit it on a quiet day. Neuschwanstein Castle is open every day, and entrance is 10 Deutschmarks. That's around $7. The joined towns of Garmisch and Partenkirchen are about a two-and-a-half-hour drive from Berchtesgaden, or about one hour by train from Munich. I decided to stay in the Partenkirchen end of town. It's got an older feel to it, and I wanted to try out a Gasthof there. Gasthofs are rural or small town hotels with restaurants that often feature traditional food. My luck was in. They had a room free for me. Hey, what a welcoming party. This joint is really jumping. Hey. Mein Name ist Gracio. Uh, ich habe ihn reservieren lassen. Ein Zimmer? Ein Zimmer. Für Sie? Eine Zimmer für eine Nacht. Für eine Nacht. Einen Moment. Schauen wir mal noch. Jawohl, das haben wir. Okay, now this form is like the one you fill in in Italy and France and a lot of parts of Europe. It's just for the tourist office, and you'll also be paying about a three Deutschmark tax to the tourist office, but for that tax, you're going to get a card which gets you reductions on certain sites and attractions. So it's one of those situations where they take with one hand and give with the other. I think that's what they call bureaucracy. Great. Tourist information on the town. And this is my discount card. Huh. Okay, let's see what do we get here. All right. Yeah. Now this is the Gasthof Fraundorfer. 
Uh, I would say this is a little fancier than most of the guest houses or gast houses I've stayed in in Germany. Uh, it's got a feeling to it because this family, the Fraundorfer family, has owned it since 1820. Now, I'm not an accordion aficionado, so I'm kind of happy to be over here away from all that noise. Be nice while I'm having dinner, but it might keep me up at night. Okay, the bathroom. Now, no bathtub, but immaculately clean. And by the way, that's something you're going to find throughout Germany. The hotels are clean. Got the shower, toilet, sink. Yeah, not bad. At Gasthof Fraundorfer, rooms cost from 62 Deutschmarks per person. That's around $42. What do I feel like tonight? Pig's knuckle? Warm lung? Hmm, Wiener schnitzel. That's good. Now, this is a Kleinus beer. That's a little beer. Okay, it's a sissy-sized beer, I admit it, but I'm not a big beer drinker. The Germans, though, they really like their beer. And the Bavarians really, really, really like their beer. They drink the rest of Germany under the table. Now, one way you can tell if it's a good beer or not in this country is how long it takes to get to your table. It should take about seven minutes to get to you. That's how long it takes to properly pour one. And it should have a good size head. Not all head, but a good firm head. Pretty good to me. the biggest veal cutlet I've ever seen in my life. And that's the kid's portion. I mean, if it was the adult portion, it would be like falling off the plate. I don't know where they put it. But I know where I'm going to put it right now. Stay with me, and we'll go on a bus ride into the Bavarian Alps, and I'll take you to Ludwig II's Magical Grotto. All coming up in A Practical Guide to Bavaria. One good thing about the buses in Bavaria, they run on time. The easiest way to explore the Bavarian Alps is with a car. But I've been using public transportation and I've found some incredible places. Like this, Linderhof Palace. This is where Ludwig II escaped to the country. He actually felt more at home here in the Alps than in Munich. I can relate to that. This place is decorated in early Las Vegas casino style. Ludwig had more glitz than you've had hot dinners. Linderhof Palace is a lot of fun to visit. It's so over-decorated, and at the same time, it feels like sort of a dollhouse palace because it's very small size. By the way, these peacocks, there's another one in the other room, they were placed outside when Ludwig was in residence. And get a load of this a piano over here. Liberace could play this thing. You know, Ludwig was like a vampire. He slept in here during the day, and then at night, he either visited his grotto or went for sleigh rides. Now, this is a small palace, and they move 5,000 people a day through here. So to avoid the crowds, come at 9 in the morning or about 4 in the afternoon. Ludwig adored the composer Wagner and would come here to listen to his favorite operas. Well, they call Ludwig mad, but how crazy could he be? It looks to me like he invented Pirates of the Caribbean about a hundred years before Disney did. Now listen, you can visit the grounds of the palace for free, but a visit to the grotto here is included in the price of a guided tour, and you don't want to miss this. Linderhof Palace and Grotto are open daily. Entrance costs nine Deutschmarks. That's around six dollars. It's a wishing well, too. I wish I could hear a Wagnerian opera in here. Mm -hmm. 
Bavaria is one of my favorite parts of Europe. It's retained much of its original identity, hasn't been completely swamped by American culture. That's refreshing, and the countryside is exhilarating. But to make the most of your trip to Bavaria, make sure you remember these practical tips. Buy a 24-hour Tagus card for traveling on the U-Bahn in Munich. Buy a Sonder ticket for both the boat and the cable car in Berchtesgaden. Remember Gasthof for traditional hotels. Portions are big in Germany, so try a kid-sized portion in restaurants. Bring waterproof clothing with you even in summer. And remember, you get reductions with your tourist discount card. This is John Garasio saying goodbye from the Linderhof Palace in Bavaria.